Welcome to Juniper Networks Learning Byte. My name is Marv Yunus. I'm a lab architect with Education Services Lab Team. In this Learning Byte, I'm going to be showing you how to uh, retrieve a uh, missed organization device stats using HTTP PI tool using missed REST API. So uh, before we uh, show you how to do that, you know, uh, let's talk about a few requirements and facts. So HTTP PI is a tool that allows uh, you to run API calls REST API calls, you know, from different kind of system, Linux, Windows, whatever you choose, okay? I, I will show you their website and you can kind of take a look. Uh, it's become very popular uh, recently. Just to make the life easier for developers when making testing API calls, okay? So uh, the system that, that you're going to be, you know, uh, running the command and needs to have this installed, which is pretty simple. In my case, it was like just one command on a CentOS server. Red Hat's the best server, like, I'm pretty sure you know, other systems will have easier methods uh, if you follow their documentation. API token for MIST needs to be generated for the organization while you're running this API, you know, too. Uh, so if you don't have access to the organization, you need to request that access from your uh, org admin to invite you to the organization so that you can, you know, make the API calls. And I'll show you a little bit how to generate the API token quickly. It's usually very, it's very simple, right? And then you need to have access to the missed API endpoint, the public endpoint, which you'll be hitting through HTTPS from the server, Linux server in my case, you know, you need to have access to that endpoint, okay? Now, this command, like, it's almost like a single line command, right, that I'll be showing you that will, you know, empower you to, you know, grab a lot of data instead of logging into the portal and do all that, getting all this information, right? So it can be, you know, this command line uh, command can be, uh, integrated inside a shell script or python script any script that can make you know cli calls right into the linux system so that gives you a lot of power right and you don't need to learn another programming language to use this tool honestly right if you just you know uh, a system administrator that just you know know how to run cli commands and you have your own cheat sheet of commands you know this command could be in your cheat sheet you know that you can use for grabbing different missed api data without learning another new language, right, if you don't want to. It can be help getting a lot of basic stuff, you know, done through it, through CLI. Okay, without further ado, let me uh, go to the demonstration part. Uh, so I logged into my, um, before I log into the MIS site, you know, this is the uh, uh, URL and a site for the HTTP pipe, right? And it's basically, you know, as you see here, you know, uh, it's making API simple and intuitive for those who are building the tools of our feature, okay? So, you know, they have a good uh, documentation and you can actually, you know, uh, for web, there's a web-based tool, there's a Windows app, the Linux app, right? Uh, you know, I think uh, I did uh, what I did on my Linux system here. Sorry. I think this is what I did. Sorry. I think this is the command. Dpi. Yeah, that's what I did. This is the command I ran, I ran to install it on my machine. Simple as that one line command and I have the tool ready okay but you know uh, you, you you can you can check the website and then uh, download uh, it's like Carl but in a, in a, there are differences you know between Carl and this tool you know it, it uh, with this tool you know when you make the API call the formatting is you know by default nice in Carl sometimes you need to use another tool to you know make it nicer or, or there are a lot of things so check the documentation if you want to learn more about this but you know this is the tool I'm going to be showing and uh, I logged into my missed uh, account organization, which I'll be running the API against. So once I logged in, you know, I can, I can, uh, I, I can go to the uh, organization settings, you know, get the org ID if I needed to, but I will show you how to get it through the API without even, you know, going in. And usually if you're dealing with one org, maybe this will be, you know, same for you all the time, you know, depending on how complex the environment is, if you have multiple orgs, you can have a, you know, list of orgs in your file somewhere that IDs that you don't have to do all the time, right? But you know, if you need it, here's a way to get it from here. This uh, and this can change. The UI can change all the time, right? So I don't want to restrict you to the just the UI. Okay. So to get the uh, before you even get to our guide and all that, you know, uh, we need to generate a token, right? So to generate a token, you go here, the help settings here, and API documentation, and then you should look for the API token. So this is the, you know, API token generation, uh, you know, method, right? 
So basically, Incan will explain a little bit. So to create a pay token, uh, you need to basically uh, go to this URL. So the endpoint is considered this part, HTTPS API .com, API v1, right? This part. This part will be same in many cases. And then in depending on the API call you'll be making, you basically add stuff to this uh, URL, right? So in my case, let's say I want to generate a token, then uh, I, I have it open already. I just uh, go here, and you have to log into the dashboard to, to be able to browse to this site. So you browse to this site, right? And then uh, you land in here. I already have a token which I'll be using, but I can create another one by clicking just post here. That will uh, create a token for me. And then once that gets generated, I'm not gonna do it right now. You know, you can copy and paste those information, the token key and an ID in your text file somewhere. Because once you move away from this side, you cannot get that key anymore, right? In here, I, I cannot read this key anymore, right? I had to save it. So that's how you generate a token. Um, and then once you generate the token, then you're ready to make the API call. And basically, to find the organization ID, which you belong, you can either, you know, do here, just remove this part, enter. It tells you what org ID you have. So that's another way, okay? I get my org ID here, and I also see what right I have, right? Admin right to the org, to this org, okay? And what can I do? Put a lot of you know, options, get, delete, different kinds, right? So that's another way. I can, I will also show you this same thing from the HTTP, uh, the tool, the Pi tool, okay? So we need to have the token generated, which we have, okay, in my case, right? Uh, so I'm just gonna go back to the, uh, I think I have a notepad here uh, open. So, you know, this is what I'm going to do. So find out the org ID and check access. I can run this URL, right? So it's pretty simple. The HTTP and then follow timeout. You just can decide a timeout. You can change the values and you can, you know, read the documentation to learn more. In my case, I just, I usually keep it yearly. And I'm doing the get operation to get the data. And then what URL I'm browsing to, depending on the API call, it changes, right? And the next one will be changing when I'm going to do the get the status uh, statistics uh, of the device. And then the authorization is the key, right? Token, and it has to be this format, okay? So once I copy and paste this to my uh, single line, you see a single line. You don't have to do any kind of, you know, import package and all those things like in a programming language, you know, in a programming, uh, in a, you know, uh, Python or anything else. I mean, I love Python, but you know, I'm saying like in this case, you can just have it in one line. Uh, and then um, I'm gonna go to the Linux server, right? Since I've been installed. I'm gonna paste this, okay? I'm just gonna see uh, what org ID do I have, right? There you go. I have it nice with some data, you know, what time they ran and all that stuff, right? And uh, here's my org ID, right? I can get to that. Now, to get the uh, side device statistics, right? I need to run this, uh, and you can, you can grab all this information from the documentation, right? If you uh, go to this, uh, you know, API documentation, right? You know, if you go to org, sorry, uh, uh, device test, right? You can you can see you can do site ID as well. You can do a true org ID as well. I think uh, you have to go to organization. If you go to org level, uh, organization, inventory, stats. Yeah, I search it. I use search a lot here, right? Uh, sorry, I just missed it. Gosh, okay. Now I have to go back to the whole thing. Let me go back again, sorry. Go to org. Let's see. Inventory. Stats. Org device test, right? I can I can do that, okay? This is what I'm gonna show you, okay? And it, it can play along, right? So I need org ID here and the stats, devices and limit hundred. I you know I usually I can do without just any of that. Just put this is what I'm gonna show you, like just get without a limit. So page limit is hundred, right? You can if a huge inventory uh device, you know, then you can limit this. It'll be okay, so let me show the command. This is exactly like the previous one, just a URL change as you see here, right? So if you have this, you know, well formatted, you can always change this URL depending on what you look after, right? So in a program, say if you don't want to, if you make it automated, you want to get the org ID, right? 
then you can run this first, grab the org ID so some grep or something like you know some Linux tool uh, or CLI if you if you're using you know Linux uh, you know awk and all those things you can use that and then once you have that you can pass this as a variable in the org ID and then get the same. So I'm gonna run this command now. See, got it. So you know, I see my APs, right? I have two APs, right? And I see, uh, you know, what what side they belong to. So you know, one of them belongs to, I believe, primary, and the other one is backup. So this one is backup, and this one, uh, the the other one is belonging to the primary side, right? Uh, where is it? Primary side here, right? And one thing you have to know that you know, uh, uh, it, it sorting is not always what you like, but depending on what you operate. But you can you can go way advanced if you if you read through sorting through JSON uh, through a lot of tools, including uh, HTTP five. Okay, and then what IP address they got, right? All that information is there. So I could have a cron job or a script to run on my org to get all the device tasks. Like you know, if I wanted to you know get an email. Or something like I want to do based on some actions I can do something right so it gives me the ability to do that from CLI instead of going to the uh, dashboard every single time to the GUI and all that right so that's the benefit of using this tool and it's just one single line right one single line the whole thing is there like you have to get all this data uh, so that's the beauty of it and I hope uh, this video helps thank you for watching visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.